When we run a long task, it is good practice to provide our users with some mechanism to cancel the task. The .NET framework offers us cancellation tokens for that. The idea is that we are going to generate a token and we will pass that token to the task that we want to be able to cancel. Then through the token generator, we can cancel the operation. Let's look at an example. We are here in Visual Studio and let's say that we want to cancel the process cars method. So let's press F12 here and let's go here. And what is the main operation of this method? Well, it is this, the HTTP request that we do to the server to process our card operation. So it is here that we will be able to pass a cancellation token. As you can see here, we have that this method can receive a cancellation token. So we will send a cancellation token and we will pass it to this method. And through the token generator, we will be able to cancel every single operation that has that token. Let's do that. First of all, we need a token generator. So let's go up. Let's go all the way up here. And I want to come here and say private cancellation token serves. This is the token generator that we have been talking about. I will just name it CTS for cancellation token source. And then here at the bottom start click event, CTS equal to new cancellation token source. And then through this cancellation token source, I can generate a token as you can see. It is just a property of the cancellation token source. The token is a property of our CTS object. So what we're going to do is that we're going to pass our token here into this process cars method. So let's say CTS.token. And now let's go here to process cards and we need to declare the parameter that represents the cancellation token. So let's say cancellation token. I will just name it token and I will say equal to default. And we're going to say here equal to default because this is going to be the default value. And the default value is going to be a dummy cancellation token. That way, if the client of the method does not want to send a cancellation token, then the client doesn't have to. Now let's go down here. And as we saw, we can pass a cancellation token to this post async method. So we are going to say token here. And now if we cancel this token through the cancellation token source, the operation, the HTTP request is going to be canceled. It doesn't matter. If it is a still an ongoing operation, it is going to be immediately stopped. So now we need a mechanism for canceling the token. For that, we're going to go to our UI. So let's go to the Solution Explorer and let's double click on form one. And we're going to create a new button. We're going to drag a new button. So let's drag a button here and let's put it next to our start button. Let's press F4 because I want to change the text property to cancel, we'll be able to cancel the token by pressing this button that we have here. And we're also going to name this button, button cancel. I'll press enter and now I will double click on the button so that this creates our event handler. And here what I will do is that I will say CTS, which is our cancellation token source that it is a field of this class, I will make sure that it is not null, then I'll press dot and I'll say cancel. In this way, I am canceling the token that was generated from the cancellation token source. And in that way, I will be effectively canceling the process cards method. There are two more things that we have to do before running this example. The first one is that cancellation token source implements the iDisposable interface, which means that we should dispose it. So let's go here and let's say finally cts.dispose. And also before exiting this method, I want to say cts equal to null. Another thing that I want to do is to catch the exception. As you can see, we have catch HTTP request exception. And when we cancel a task, we typically receive an exception, which is called task cancel exception. So let's catch that. Let's say catch task cancel exception. Let's say X and we can say something like message box dot show. And we're just going to say the operation was canceled. And that's it. Now we're ready to run this example. Let's press control F5 to run our application. 
and we're going to see that if we click on start, everything is going to run as expected. We can see that we have our GIF here and we have our progress bar here and everything is going smoothly. And finally the operation has finished so we can click on OK and everything is great. And if we click start one more time but now we press cancel, then the operation was cancelled, the operation is done and finally everything disappears from our screen. We don't have the loading GIF, we don't have the progress bar because we just cancelled the operation and so the user does not have to wait through the whole process. Therefore as you can see with the cancellation token source we can generate a token that we can pass to methods so that we can cancel the operation. It is good practice to provide the user with a mechanism to cancel a long running operation. And of course never forget to dispose the cancellation token source. Since it implements a disposable, we should always dispose it.